Thank you so much, Stephanie Wilson, for joining us, engineer and astronaut of NASA. So you have logged more than 40 days in space, so what an honor having you on stage with us today. Yes, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So I wanted to know first, what really, as a little girl, did you have that dream and say, you know what, I, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be an engineer? I did. I was very fortunate to have supportive parents. They always encouraged me and told me that there were no limits. And also my teachers were very encouraging. And I had uh, a career awareness class, so I was given an assignment in junior high and eighth grade to interview somebody who worked in an interesting career field. Mm -hmm. At the time I was interested in astronomy. I interviewed a local area astronomy professor and I was fascinated with his work. He had an opportunity to uh, do research, to uh, view the night sky, you know, to teach and to travel around the world for different events and uh, I thought that was, you know, would be a fabulous way to uh, have a career and contribute in science and of course pursue my interest in space. Um, I also mm -hmm was interested in learning about components and understanding design and how uh, vehicles are designed. So I did decide to study engineering uh, in high school. But uh, I thought that you know, aerospace engineering mm -hmm. would be a good combination of my interest in space and interest in engineering. It's interesting you, you say that because you had that dream, but also the motivation from your parents, from the society, from the, the, uh, your teachers to keep you on track to follow that dream. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. Yes, and it was very important. I think it's very helpful as a young person, you know, to have that guidance and to have that support. Well, let's talk about your, your space. You were selected uh, uh, as an astronaut by NASA in, 2000, uh, in 1996. How was the first day at work? Yeah, the first day at work is very interesting, and especially for a government um, institution, there's a lot of paperwork, of course, you meet with people from uh, human resources and do all your benefits and things like that. But I would say that really the first two years for us as astronaut candidates uh, is very important. We uh, start our generic training, and so we learn about the systems of the space shuttle and the space station. We have simulator training. We learn to fly NASA T-38s. We travel to all of the different NASA centers. Uh, and those of us that are not a military undergo some military training, land and water survival, and so forth. So the first two years are really very, very exciting. And once we complete that training, then we're qualified for flight assignment. Yeah. Ten years later, you were part of STS-121 mission. When the shuttle headed over the Atlantic Ocean, we can see the coastline of Florida fading away. How can you describe the flying sensation knowing that the shuttle rolled about 4,000 miles an hour? Oh, it's very exciting. I mean, that is quite an adrenaline rush. It's really uh, the ride of a lifetime. Eight and a half minutes from start to finish. Uh, the solid rocket boosters, the main engines ignite, the solid rocket boosters ignite while you're still on the pad, and so you really have the sensation that you're about to go somewhere, mm -hmm. and as soon as the connecting bolts uh, are blown or separated, you start, you know, you start on your way. And uh, it's very, um, there's a little bit of vibration while we have the solid rocket boosters for the first two minutes, 20 seconds, and then once they separate, it's a very smooth ride on the main engines for the remaining period, and eight and a half minutes later, the main engines cut off, and we're weightless. Yes, because when the tail is off, and we know the shuttle keep on going, is it the same vibration, the same sensation inside, the No, feeling? once the solid rocket boosters separate, then it is much smoother. Uh, I'm not an astronaut, but I know that the 50 miles high when you reach that level is the secure time saying, okay, we are getting closer to destination. Tell me more about that. So we use the 50 mile mark uh, to say that someone has, has been in space or has done... Um, ah. Uh, you know, has reached the mark of, of obtaining orbital flight. So uh, that's really the milestone that we say that our first time flyers become astronauts. And so the main engine cutoff happens at about that time. So uh, we're able to congratulate our first time flyers as uh, colleagues uh, as becoming new astronauts. On day six, you were uh, working in the uh, logistic module. So you were moving uh, packages from a play location to another location. Tell me more about that uh, process. We did carry uh, a logistics module in the payload bay of Discovery. Uh, my colleague Lisa and I worked with a robotic arm basically to remove it from the payload bay of Discovery and attach it temporarily onto the space station. Uh, and after that time, we were able to open the hatch and then start the transfer of the supplies and experiments and logistics to the space station. It um, requires quite a bit of tight choreography, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. if you have a full house with no place to place new items. Uh, you have to do a bit of 
uh, rearranging to make room for the new items, uh, which uh, the space station crew did, and then we brought on the new items, and then they had also packed up the experiments and the items that, mm -hmm. that were complete, and we loaded them into the logistics module and then robotically returned it to, to the payload bay of discovery and then brought those items home. What a fascinating process. Any other uh, EVA work you had to do on the mission of uh, STS-121? We did have three uh, spacewalks on that flight, and mm -hmm. that um, flight was one of the two test flights uh, that we used to return uh, the space uh, shuttle to uh, return to flight. It was uh, the very uh, soon after the uh, Columbia accident. So mm -hmm. we were given the charge of cert recertifying or certifying the shuttle for flight after that, uh, after that accident. And so a lot of our uh, spacewalks were uh, test objectives for that. We had a repair material that we could apply mm -hmm. to the wing leading edge should it be needed to repair a damaged shuttle. So we had samples in the payload bay that our spacewalkers, Piers and Mike, applied this new material to. We returned it home for testing at the Johnson Space Center to make sure that uh, it, it uh, would operate correctly in the heating of reentry, and so it went through the tests and the material held up well. Uh, we also put a spacewalker at the end of a, a boom platform mm -hmm. that we had to make sure that the flexibility provided enough stability to conduct a repair. And um, we also had uh, components for the space station. We bought a pump module, uh, an extra one, and then also we repaired uh, a component on the rail cart system of the space station. So it looked like it's not a vacation when going to no, space. No, <laughs> it's not. There's a lot of work. There's a lot it's of work a, that has well, to be done. Wow. Uh, let's talk a little bit food and beverages. Uh, uh, the uh, Russian uh, bar is where you guys uh, had uh, lunch. Tell me more about the ambient. What is it you have to carry with you as far as food and beverages to space? Yes, and we uh, are very uh, fortunate that we tried to have our meals together. So mm -hmm. we gather in uh, the service module and many times to, uh, to have our meals in the Russian segment of the space station. And uh, the food is very, um, uh, as far as uh, what we can eat, very similar mm -hmm. to uh, what we can eat uh, at home. So there we have a dehydrated food that we add water to when we are on orbit. And we also have a style similar to the military meals, a ready to eat style. But in both of those styles, um, many varieties of meats, chicken, pork, fish, uh, beef are available, uh, spaghetti, um, rice, mashed potatoes, any kind of vegetables, corn, carrot, green beans, and so forth are all, are all wow. available as space food. And we also have um, desserts, brownies, and so forth, cookies, candies, um, fruits and nuts, uh, mostly dried fruit, mm -hmm. um, and so forth. We do have some fresh fruit items like apples that we're also and able to And you do the fly. same eating three times a day, or is yes. it different? Yes, no, we try to eat three times a day. Um, breakfast and lunch usually happen as normally uh, would here on Earth, but usually our dinner is pretty late. Once we wrap up the items of the day, uh, have an opportunity perhaps to call our families, um, mm -hmm. Dinner, dinner wow. is usually later, but we, but we do have it. You even had time to do space art. <laughs> yes, we, uh, you know, we have time to look out of the window and to do a little bit of space art. And uh, on this flight, uh, my colleague Lisa and I were dubbed the Robo Chicks. And so when all of the spacewalks and robotics operations were complete, um, one of our colleagues, Pierce, one of the spacewalkers, I think drew kind of a simulated patch with us as the Robo Chicks, uh, as uh, featured in the artwork. Wow, great, great. Now let's switch, let's talk more about the uh, day two. I know you work as well on another mission, STS-120, mm -hmm. right? So tell me more about the inspection. I know on day two you had to do inspection on the, uh, uh, on the edges. So tell me more about that process. Yes, and so it's very important that also coming out of the um, Columbia accident that we have an ability to detect if there's been any damage to the shuttle on ascent. And so we do this inspection of the orbiter on day two using mm -hmm. the space uh, shuttle robotic arm attached to this long boom, which has sensors at the tip. And there are uh, sensors or components at the tip that are able to detect damage in both the wing leading edge and the nose cap. And so we do that imagery, we downlink it uh, to the ground for the ground experts to uh, review it. And if they do find a problem, we have an opportunity at a later time when we're docked to the space station to do an additional uh, inspection with additional sensors that can uh, give us a, a closer look. Mm. So it's a very delicate process because it, it takes almost half a day to, to do. Yes, it does. The arm uh, has to move very slowly 
and it comes in it comes very close to a structure and so at those times we're looking through the cameras to make sure that um, you know that it all operates correctly and that it's very safe mm. uh, let's talk about the sensation when the shuttle is getting closer to station in space mm -hmm. how, how is it for you inside Oh, it's wonderful. We, uh, as we get closer and closer to the space station, of course, it's it's getting larger and larger in our view. Mm -hmm. We're able to take pictures uh, as we uh, get close and uh, also establish communications with the space station crew. Uh, we're looking forward to starting our mission, our joint mission with them, and also bringing whatever supplies that we have for them. Um, but it's a great opportunity to look back at this orbiting laboratory that we've built internationally and collaboratively where we have three science laboratories, one built by the U.S., one built by Europe, and one built by Japan, where mm -hmm. we're able to do amazing microgravity research. Wow. Uh, my post-production supervisor, Michael, and I we were looking at the video, and we say it's party time when you reach station. <laughs> is it the same way you guys call it? <laughs> it is. We are very excited, of course, when we open the hatches yeah. and we're able to greet our colleagues. Um, we have an opportunity you know, to hug them and say hello and perhaps present them with any gifts that, uh, that we've brought. Um, but actually we get uh, very quickly uh, to work. They give us a safety briefing mm -hmm. so that we're familiar with uh, areas on the space station where, uh, and also so that we know where any of the emergency equipment is located. One of the things that really caught my attention is the PS piece, so how the robotic moves and detach the, the uh, PCs and move them back. Tell me more about that process. Uh, we use a robotic arm to um, work with uh, payloads outside as well as spacewalkers, and so we can use it to install any modules mm -hmm. um, and also um, uh, as we fly the spacewalkers around. And uh, you might work, uh, you might be I talking about the some, solar I arrays. noticed some of the pieces you cannot fly with them, so you have to build it right in space. Yes. You know? Yeah, so if it's larger than the uh, payload bay of Discovery, mm -hmm. then we have to assemble them on orbit. And so we do some of that with the spacewalkers, um, you know, so we have mm -hmm. the robotic arm and we're able to connect them, uh, put them in place, and then spacewalkers are there to watch the interface, yes. make sure that everything has good alignment and comes together, and then they can drive the mechanical bolts and, and make any uh, fluid lines if there are any. The deployment of solar rays, I, I notice is another fascinating aspect of, uh, of the mission as well. Yes, we uh, on this mission, SCS 120, we had uh, we had the charge of relocating one of the solar arrays. So it was mm -hmm. in the central part of the space station. We had to move it out to a far side uh, on the left side, and uh, in order to do that, you have to uh, close it up or fold it up, and then put it in its location and then unfold it. And while we were unfolding it, we did have. Um, a problem where one of the guide wires tore tearing a hole in one of the solar panels. So we had to do an additional spacewalk to um, repair that solar array. Wow, wow, wonderful. Switching gear, I have to say thank you so much for being here at Miami Dade College, North Campus for the STEM Station uh, series that they're having. And also thank you for your service to the country. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I've learned a lot now from space and <laughs> all these elements. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you.